you've written a lot of programs in learning to work with Java, but they have been once missing one important component, and that is the ability to store data from one execution of the program to the next. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the basic concepts of reading and writing to text files. Java supports two different types of files, text files, which are uh, human readable. That is, you could open them up in Notepad or some other text editor and read the contents. It also supports binary files, which are machine readable files. You wouldn't be able to read the contents of those. And we'll hold that off for another video. In order to perform file processing, processing operations, you need two things. You need a file object and you need a file stream object. The file object represents the single file or, or a directory, depending on how you define it, uh, that exists on your hard drive. The file stream is going to be the conduit that gets the data from your program and into the file. When we use a file object, just like any other class in Java, we need to instantiate it in order to work with it. And this one's pretty simple. Uh, the data type or the class is file with uh, uppercase F. And when you call the constructor or one of the constructors for file, you supply a string that contains the uh, name of the file, the file that you want to create or use or open, whatever the case may be. So let's have a look at what that looks like in code. Now here we've got a very simple program and when I say simple, I mean super simple. It doesn't do anything. In fact, if we go and look in the folder for this project, you'll notice there is no file here, no sample.dat file. This is simply the instantiation of the file. This creates the object in your program, but it does not create the file on your disk. You need to take some additional action in order to do that. So let's execute this and see what happens. Program runs, nothing happens. In fact, if we go over here, you notice there's still no file down here. Now, if we want something to happen, we have to work with the file. We have to write some data to the file. We have to save the file, close it, uh, do these kinds of things. So uh, let's add a little additional code to this so we can have a look at uh, potentially what we can do with the file. I've added some code that calls the create new file method that uses that object that you just instantiated. If it's successful, uh, then a boolean true is returned from the operation and we can use that to report back to the user that the file was created. If it fails for whatever reason, uh, then it'll give us the message that says the file was not created. Uh, so once again, quick look, no file. Let's execute this says the file was created and in fact it was there it is sample dat zero bytes there's no data in it but the file exists on the disk now in fact we could go in and we could um, we could utilize another method of the file class which is exists to go now and check to see if that file exists before we take some additional operation. But we're not going to do that with this right now. The file class is a rich, rich class. This is representing not only a single file on the disk, but it also is representative of the folders in which the files exist. So you have total control over the files and the file system. You can provide uh, explicit paths for your files, or you can allow them to go into the default directory like we did with this. Let's move on now. We want to actually work with some data. So then the first thing we're going to approach is how to read data in a file. If you have written programs that send data to the screen and take key 
data in from the keyboard, you've already been using streams whether you have recognized them or not. A stream is a conduit uh, that carries data from one object to another, generally from your program to the console or from your keyboard into the program or to and from a file, whatever the case is, it's a pipeline that enables data to travel between one object and another. Java supports two types of streams, character and binary, and you already know the difference between that type of data. It's important to recognize what type of data you want to send or receive because you want to instantiate the proper class. Now you've been using system.out.println to put data out on the screen and that's a stream. It's connected to the a default output device which is system out which is, is your screen. Uh, and you've also probably used the scanner object to bring data in from the keyboard. You instantiated that object. It's not a default object, uh, but generally you point it to system.in, which is by default uh, the keyboard. We can use those concepts now to read data from a file, write data to a file. So once again, let's have a look at some code. All right, in this program, we're going to read a data file, data file 01, and the contents of that are right there, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So you already know what you can read or what you're going to read. So let's have a look at the code that does that. Now, we're instantiating an integer variable just to handle that data as it comes out of the file. This is a familiar command. We are instantiating a file object and pointing it to data file 01, which is a file we were just looking at. We also need a scanner object. We're going to use the scanner stream and point it to a file rather than system.in. So uh, scanner f stream is instantiated, but notice that we point it to the file object that you just instantiated it here. In the past, you've been putting system.in right here. Okay, so in file. And yes, I know there's an error there. We'll come back to that. Uh, then we uh, are going to simply loop, read the items out of the file by using that scanner object. Now, you already figured out there's an error here because you've got the little error message and you've got a scanner. And what that is, is something called a checked exception. There are two types of exceptions in Java. Well, there's many types of exceptions, but two of the main ones are checked and unchecked. You worked in the previous video with unchecked. That is, your program would compile without catching those exceptions. A checked exception is one that Java says is so important that your program must handle it. And so without a try catch block in the program, the program simply will not compile. When we try to instantiate the scanner object with the in file, uh, the file uh, object will throw an IO exception or a file not found exception if it can't um, if it can't locate the data file that you're pointing the scanner stream to. So we need to encapsulate that code at least the scanner up to that point in a try block but I'm just going to put everything within a try block and I'm just going to catch a general exception right now uh, because I know the file exists uh, but you could be more specific there you could put the file not found exception uh, and try to catch that now you notice that once I encapsulated this with the try block inside the try block uh, my arrow went away and it should execute so let's run the program and there it is. It prints out the, it read and prints out the contents of my data file. Now what did it do? The scanner object, instead of being pointed to the keyboard, is pointed to that file object. So it went, opened the file, um, 
and got ready inside this loop as long as there is a next integer as long as there is one more so while the file is not at the end of a end of the file it is going to simply loop and read and then print out the contents read print out read read print out when it gets to the very last item in the file the 50 it looks forward again to see if there's another token in that stream there are no more tokens in that stream so this is false it drops through and then we execute the close method the close method is critical you do not want to forget to do this in fact you can set this up to automatically close Closing the file tells the operating system that the file is being released back to the operating system, that this program is done with it and that it is, uh, it is complete. You're done writing to that file or reading that file in this instance. If you do not specifically close the file, the operating system may close the file for you, but you cannot assume that. If uh, an error occurs inside the operating system and you have not issued the close command, you could create a memory leak and a problem for yourself down the road. So this is a very simple example of reading data out of a file. The next example we're going to look at is reading a data file that contains multiple data types. We have to approach it just a tiny bit differently. So let's move on to that. This example is just a tiny bit more complicated only because the data file that we're going to read, data file 02, contains different types of data. The file contains an integer, a name of a person, and then the instrument that they play in the band. So we're going to read one, two, three elements across each line. So the thing that changes here is not the file instantiation nor the scanner. It's just simply the way that you loop to read the elements in the file rather than looking for the next integer or the next uh, string. Uh, you're going to just check for the next token in the line. And that's necessary because you're looking for different types of data uh, within here. So inval is going to pick up the first integer uh, that is the numeral that is in front of uh, the name. Uh, then the name will grab by getting the next token and then the next token is picked up. All of these methods of the file stream scanner object. So real quick we'll just run this and see how it works. And it works splendidly. So there's the there is the integer value there is the column with the, I guess I could address this up a little bit, but uh, here's the column with the names and then the column with the instruments there. So same thing you did with reading just the integer file. This one you just, uh, you want to loop uh, using a little different uh, look forward in the, uh, you want to look for a different type of token in the stream um, rather than a specific data type. That you know how to read from a file. Uh, writing to a file should be much, much easier for you to understand. You already understand the fundamentals. You're going to need a file object and you're going to need a stream to point between your program and that file object. In this last little bit of the video, I'm going to introduce uh, a new stream object and that is called the print writer. The print writer encapsulates a lot of the uh, formatted print operations or output operations for you. And you're going to be familiar with most of the methods here because it, it encapsulates things like print line, print F, um, just print by itself that you have seen in the default output object, which is system.out. Like any other class, you need to instantiate it first, and that's a matter of giving an identifier, in this case P, using the new operator to call print writer with its constructor and pass a file object to it. So whatever your file object identifier is, you put that in as the constructor. Once you've done that, you're ready to go. So let's go have a look at some code. 
In this program, we're going to do something just a tiny bit different, and that is I'm going to essentially, in real time, add data into a file. So I'm going to use the print writer for this purpose, and you'll see that we begin by asking the user for a file name. We're going to assume that they're going to give us a valid file name in this program. Uh, associate that file name with a file object, so that will be just letter F. And then I'm going to instantiate my print writer, which I'm going to call OF stream just to set it apart today. So print writer OF stream, and there's my file object. So boom, there's my conduit between the program and that file object. In this do while loop, I'm going to continue to loop until the user tells me to stop. Uh, but during that, I'm going to gather some bits of information from them, uh, a quantity and a description, and then I'll ask them if they want to repeat again. This then is passed as a uh, set of parameters to the method write file data. And I want you to notice something here. This stream is being passed as a parameter to the method. It's an object, and you can use it as a parameter type, just like you can the primitive types. Okay, so here's a write line, or I'm sorry, write file data. I take the integer quantity, the description string, and the print writer object, and simply call the print writer method printf and do all the familiar things with it that we have become accustomed to. So let's execute this and see what it does. All right, that was slow, but here we go. All right, so we'll call this uh, inventory.dat. Uh, 10 widgets, do it again, sure, 10 things, uh, one more, 20 doodads, all right, that's enough, so we answer no, it executes, finishes the uh, do while loop, closes the stream and we're out and here's the contents of inventory.dat 10 widgets 10 things 20 doodads so it's a simple matter of pointing the print writer stream towards the output file and passing data from my program through that conduit into the file as always good luck with your programming